<laughs> Hi y'all, I'm Hannah. Yo, I'm Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Marie, and me and the 80s gals are coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Wally Wednesday! Hey everybody, happy Wednesday and happy throwback to the neon 80s. I have the best fairies on <laughs> This much bling, yeah. Look at this stuff. These <laughs> girls are awesome. Why are you guys all dressed up for the '80s? Oh, we've got a fun new, fun new thing to show y'all. <laughs> yeah. These guys weren't even born in the '80s. <laughs> I was. <laughs> you don't have one? Oh, that's good. We found one. <laughs> I, say, I was there. I remember. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We have a fun show planned. I hope you're ready to felt and have a good time. And I know we are. So we're gonna get started. Totally. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Marie. We are Living Felt Felting Supplies based here in Austin, Texas. But this is what we like to do on Wednesdays is hang out with our BFFs all over the world. I'm going to check in here. We're going to spend an hour today together. We have some fun things to share with you. And we're going to get some felting done. So I'm going to cue us up. Are we good, Anne? We are good. Okay. We have got Pam from Nova Scotia, Judy from North Carolina. Connie from Illinois. Hi gals, hi Pam, hi Judy, hi Connie. Okay, everyone's here. I'm going to play us and I see more, more people are checking in. So if this is your first time joining us, this is what we do on Wednesdays. We hold a live broadcast. We'll post it later on YouTube. So if you're watching live, it's a great time to comment and feedback, ask questions. Um, Anne is taking names of everyone who contributes during the broadcast and your names will be entered to win some presents at the end. If you're watching the playback on YouTube or even on Facebook, please do post any comments or questions you have. If it's a question directed to one of us, tag us, tag happiness or tag Marie so that we be sure we address your questions. Um, we have some fun things to share with you. Before we get into the felting portion, I would like you to notice that I'm not wearing my apron today. And that's because I'm doing a heartfelt, shameless promotion for my amazing husband, Rodney Jean, has an album coming out. I think it's later this month, but his t-shirts came out and I went digging through that box as soon as it <laughs> arrived. So you can follow him on YouTube and on Facebook. His name is Rodney Jean Jr., the hottest guy in my life. I love him so much. <laughs> Hi, Rodney Jean, if you're watching, and um, thank you all for being here. So we have some fun new things to share with you, and we're going to let Hannah kick it off with that. Hi, everybody. How are y'all doing? All right. I've got our new fun, bright bundle here. It's our montage to the 80s. <laughs> it's going to have some of our new colors that I'm not sure if y'all have seen. We've got tree frog, dragon fruit, and electric lemonade. This is going to be our purple, our bali, and our zinnia. And then in the hankies, we have our royal purple. In the nets, we have our sun, some fun watermelon angelina, some gorgeous lagoon sari silk, our rainforest bamboo top, and then last but not least, our Citrus Tessa. So those are fun new colors, y'all. And this is a montage to the 80s. Super fun. Thank y'all. Thanks, Hannah. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so happy that you are here. We wanted to give a, a couple of quick shout outs. The first is to Charlene Lundgren Frischer. She's on her way to Vienna right now to, to take a class with Gladys Paulus. So safe travels and have lots of fun, Charlene. Also, we just wanted to give a really big thank you to everyone who has been sending us sweet order comments and sweet emails and, and sharing what you make with us through email if you're not on Facebook. I can't tell you how much it just brightens our day to get such such sweet thoughts sent to us and, and the fact that you guys take time out of your day to, to share those with us is just beautiful. And when anyone, any one of us here sees them, we do kind of stop production for a second and read them and just make sure make sure to share those love notes. So as a 
Thank, uh, on behalf of all the fairies here, thank you guys so much. You are amazing. We love you. <laughs> oh, Jenny says you all deserve it. And Terry says love your hair. And Kate says love your new hair color. <laughs> thank you. That's <laughs> oh, fun. Oh, yeah, you're getting lots of love for the hair. Aww. <laughs> it's fun. When I grow up, I want hair like Anne. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for being here with us today. We are going to look at how to create colorful backgrounds for needle felted works. And we posted that as creating a, like a specialty canvas. And we're gonna look at a few ways to do that. Whether you 100% needle felt or wet felt or you'd like to cross over like I do and a lot of my friends do. We're gonna look at that today. And we're gonna be working with our MC1 bats. We're going to be working with our MC1 bats. Um, you can work with merino top, of course, or um, you could work with the short fiber wet felting bats. It doesn't matter. But by and large, the MC1 felting bats are the most popular wool product that we carry. When you order it, you could order it in two ounce increments. This is an example of what a two ounce increment looks like. It's a large, it's like the size of a large soup can. So we're going to be working with that today. Um, we sell it in assortment packs and we also sell it in larger sizes. So if you order four ounces or eight or a pound is about the largest we can give in a continuous bat, that's how it will come. We're going to give you one bat as opposed to um, four of these if you order a pound. So this is our MC1 batting. We'll work with it today. And the, I just want to tell you, for those of you who are familiar with it, and I know a lot of you are, this is a domestic USA fiber for sheep raised right here on U.S. farms. It is bio-washed, which means we don't treat it with any harsh chemicals to burn out the vegetable matter. As a result, you will have some vegetable matter in the fiber. Most of the time, it's absolutely you know, something that you won't notice, and we only worry about it in the top layer of our projects. Um, it's air dried, it's dyed right here at a professional facility in the U.S. and milled here as well. So we absolutely love it. If you haven't tried it, maybe you'll give it a try after you see us work with it today. So this color is called Caspian. We are going to jump right in today, turn down our cameras, and start our tutorial. So thanks for being here, and I hope you all felt along with us when you watch it back. Okay, so we are just turning on our cameras here. This is Caspian. Before we look at the finished projects, I just uh, this is what we're going to be working with before I um, put too much on the deck. I want to show you when you get a two ounce bat, this is pretty much what it's going to look like. You just unroll it and we just picked any bat off the shelf. It's been folded in half, so you'll just want to find the middle and unfold it. And this is what it looks like. So you can see it's really smooth. It's uh, got the fold in it so just straighten it out for yourself and when you're working with fiber of any kind the easiest thing to do is to divide it into workable increments so before we get started I'm going to just show you how to how we would do that in this bat the grain runs with the long length and if you look at it you'll be able to see that's the way the grain runs fiber is always going to be easier to tear with the grain. So this is what we do. We fold it in half and then I'm just going to grab it in the middle and pull. If the fiber doesn't tear easily, just move your hands further apart. But this is a very short staple length, so it's super easy and we're just going to tear it down. So now I have one ounce increments. So you saw what a two ounce increment looks like. If you order one ounce from us, you're going to get a long strip or like one ounce comes in our um, studio packs. So this is what it'll be like. And then in the studio packs, it's just made into a tiny like little ball. So you know kind of what you're getting. And we're going to be working with smaller increments of this in our examples. So this is our MC1 batting. It's a 25 micron. It's very crimpy. It's a very, very short staple product and that makes great for details when you're needle felting and easy blending as you'll see. And we've got a lot of love for, for the MC1. Joanne <laughs> shares it's the best wool ever. Oh thank you all. We so appreciate you so much and I, I personally so glad you like it because I really do. 
too. And here's my little, okay. So I have some pictures just spread out here on the deck. Let's look at a couple and I want to talk to you about what we're doing in this two-part series. We're going to be looking at um, creating basically this canvas background for whatever kind of picture you want to do, whether that's a specific subject, whether that subject is more flat or kind of has dimension like my flower does. Does that show at all that there's dimension in it? Can you see? This guy has dimension and he's not flat. He's got locks and everything. Or whether you just want to do an abstract to use for a postcard or jewelry or whatever. We're going to create canvas bases. We're going to create these bases, which I'm calling a canvas, to work on. And that's what we're working with the um, MC1. Uh huh. Oh, right. And I, I do want to say that the person who inspired this the most for me, and y'all gave us a bunch of bucket list items last year, was Heather Douglas. She mentioned that she wanted to learn how to watercolor, and she posted a wonderful picture with the multicolored background and a little fluffy owl on top. And it was obvious that she just wanted a little help transitioning those color layers. Now, this is, um, this is not transitioned like a the watercolor, but this one you can see has some gradual transitions, and this one has gradual transitions. All of these, these do. And that's what we're going to look at today, is how to lay those fibers down, not just to create um, a blend in one color range, but bringing any colors together and how you can do that so they just kind of flow. Does that sound good? Does that sound like something everybody wants to learn? Yep. Yeah. Jan Lynn Addington shares that she's really excited for this. <laughs> um, and Lois says, let the fun begin. Okay, okay. So I want to show you just a couple of things so that before you ask whether we're going to do it, I can key you up and say, yes, we're going to. So these, these two examples are 100% MC1 batting for the base. If I flip them over, you'll see that it's just the same colors of wool almost all the way through. These two pieces, what's different about them, and one of the samples we'll work on today, is they have our PFX on the back. PFX is a pre-felt. It's a very thick pre-felt. It's lofty. You could pull it apart if you wanted. And it's just a moderately compressed um, wool that's about 26 micron, very similar to like our core wool. So it's moderately compressed and gives you a shape that you can cut out as opposed to the same amount in our core wool would be, would be big and fluffy. So these have a backing that we've needle felted the fiber onto. And you could wet felt onto it also. We're going to look at that as well. Good? Good. Okay. Uh, Susan Bushko shares she's waited so long to see a tor tutorial like this one. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear it. Uh, and Heather Douglas also shares, thank you. I'll give it another shot then. <laughs> all right. All right, Heather. Thank you all for being here, really. Um, uh, and I'm so glad that you would find it useful. I want to look at a few things before we actually um, felt a background and show you some options. I showed you these pictures so you can think about what's the end result. What's the end result? Do you want to just have a picture that you frame, that you display on some kind of easel, hang on the wall, turn into a postcard or greeting card? Because we're going to look at those things in part two next week. Um, and do you want it to have dimension or do you want it to be flat? So just start thinking about that end result as we look at the samples today. And I want to show you a few works in progress. So first of all, here's a sample of just some of the colors that we're working with. This is um, for these hot tone, these little hot tone palettes that you see that I have. We have our yellows, like this is lemon and buttercup, orange, red grapefruit, coral. This is actually grape. Caspian and Ocean Green. Do those show? It doesn't matter if your colors are all in the same color family, different color families, or really cross, cross over. These methods that I'm going to show you are going, will work really well. And what I want to encourage is that you work, start working in a small sample. Like before you tackle a big picture, choose a small size. And this is just Gosh, maybe it's a six by six, like little um, card you buy 
you know, like cardstock, like a cardstock pack. I think it's about six by six. And all of my samples started out on this size. When you lay out your colors, uh, if you want a needle felt from both sides, and sometimes you want to do that because it's a little faster to get the compression, if you want a needle felt from both sides, then try and mimic the colors in both layers. If this backing is white and this is colored and you needle felt from the back, that white will push through to the other side. So just think about that and consider making some small little test samples. Okay? So let's look at how this one was created. And I'm just going to um, lay out the fibers, I think. We'll start there. Are we doing good, Anne? We are doing good. Heather wants to know what size foam is that? Oh, this is it's either the 16 by 20. I have to, I'd have to ask because we have two we have two really big landscape sizes, and they're it's one of our two largest ones. I don't know whether it's the big. I'd have to measure it. I don't even know. Okay, I want to show you first of all that what I'm what I'm holding here is a half thickness of the bat. This is a half thickness. So let me show that to you in the blue. When we took apart the blue, I peeled off just a strip, right? I cut it in half. And then I would split it again. And then I would split the thickness. Does this show for everybody? If you can't find it, just go to the other side, see where it's loose, and split the thickness so that you can work with nice little thin layers. And that's what this is, a half thickness. Each of these samples that I'm showing you today weigh between three tenths and four tenths of an ounce. So they're very lightweight. Fraser Ives asks, how do you keep the edges straight? Of the picture of this? If I would just say cut these, like don't worry about it. All of these that I'm doing are to be cut. If you want to keep the edges straight, Fraser, it's a great question, um, but for the practice of learning layout, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you want to, what you need to do, see how I'm holding my fingers here? Let's see if this shows. I'm going to hold my fingers here. I have this wool doubled over, and I'm going to hold it flat and pull this off. Now see how it sticks over? What you would need to do is go around and pinch, 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 pinch and make it as straight as you could and on every successive layer all of your layers should create that blunt edge. If they should all be blunt. Now just pushing the wool in won't help because then when you smash it they'll all go out if they're different. So if you want it to be really straight and I've learned this from doing wool hangings that are like six layers deep you need to be meticulous in your layout. And today we're not, we're not fussing with that so much, but here's what I want to show you, and I'm going to try and lay this out um, pretty quickly just to show you the transitions. A great rule or guide to go by would be to have your darker colors underneath. Now this is, this is two layers, and notice how that layer's folded. I don't really want any folded layers. What I want, see how I just fluffed that out and made it all loosey-goosey? You want those so that you can transition the layers with nice, smooth effects. If one end of your wool is a little more blunt, then just tease it out a little bit with your fingers so that you don't have any real hard blunt lines. Now I'm just going to lay this wool out and then we'll talk about what, what's going on. And Laura wants to know, is it easier to needle felt in the fluffier, thicker background? I don't understand the question. So if you clarify the question before. Okay, I'm just going to lay these, these colors out and then we're going to do our blends. This is red grapefruit, mandarin, coral reef. I'm going to put it up the middle. Each time you lay down, press your hand. You want to feel that the layers are the same depth. That's going to be really important. I'm going to go across this whole piece. And bear with me here until we get to our transitions a little more. And then I'm going to explain, I'm going to explain the transitions once I get this all laid out for you. Go ahead, Ann. I was going to say uh, the color choices are getting a lot of love. Oh, we're good, good. I was yeah. afraid they might be too hot. <laughs> okay, so that's lemon peel, and then up here I'm going to do buttercup. 
Okay. Play with this. I love pinks and oranges together and yellows, and I love greens thrown in there too. Okay, so here's two. This is two layers. I want them to be level. Now, notice that you can see these lines really well. You may want that, and if you want that, then I would suggest only, you know, feathering these out just a little bit so that there's just a soft transition. But if you want it to be a little more smooth, um, let maybe like on this piece or some of the other pieces that I showed where they almost melt into each other or at least most of them do then what you can do is everywhere you have a transition is blend those two colors so I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do the orange and the coral and even the hot orange and the coral real fast so I can show you and Patty wants to know do these colors come in a bundle we have a summer tones bundle and that does change up. Um, oh, I don't have that color. Oh, here it is. I, we have a summer tones bundle and that does change up, but it does have a lot of hot tones in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is coral and this is red grapefruit. If you're going to finger blend, start with a 50-50 ratio. That's what I always do to see how I like it. And here's all I do. Put one on top of the other. Can we see okay in both? I put my hands across the fiber on both sides and then I'm just going to pull it apart almost like you're doing cards, restack it, pull it apart, restack it. I might do that four times and then I check the other side. Oh look, I still have a solid. So then I'll pull it apart and restack it and pull it apart and restack it. Now try not to tear the fiber. Pull it so that your hands like actually come easily apart and look at this pretty finger blend in just a couple of tears. It's a nice transition and it's not fully homogenized so that means we can take it and just kind of spread it out between these two layers right here and you can bring it as down into the as far down into the dark layer as you want and you can find the colors and sort of twist and turn it so that it goes where you want it to go. So now when we felt that, whether we needle felt it or wet felt it, we're going to have a real nice transition. Can you all see that? Do I need to come up any closer? That is just a quick finger blend. Start with a 50-50 and see what you like. And Devin asks, do you ever blend small amounts of white to help colors blend? I usually don't blend white to blend colors. Um, unless I want that for a shading like if I'm trying to light if I'm trying to lighten a color I'll usually go to a sister color rather than just white um, but we do we do blend whites at times to sort of frost a color but I might not do it just to lighten a color I might use I might use a different shade in that same color family instead I would like to show you quickly a few different, so I've showed you just how to layer these here. This is a blend of this color and the mandarin, so the hot orange and the mandarin. So here we would do the same thing, just transition those two layers and blend it as much as you want. If you don't want this big orange block down here, then stretch this, you know, you can stretch this a little further, going more towards the orange. Can everyone see that okay? I see some questions, but I don't know what they are. And all I'm trying to show you is how easy it is to create little transitions by blending two colors together. What do you think, Ann? I'm going to do this, real, this one real fast. And then we're going to look at felting. So this is lemon and coral. I see some questions, but I can't read them from this far. Let's see. My, my pages is reloading. It's Okay. Yeah, you can refresh Anna over there if you want. It might be helpful. Okay, so this is coral and lemon, and I can see right away, well, you know what, I want a little more lemon than coral, so I can stop here. Oh, that's actually really fun, if y'all can see that up close, the, the, yellow, the yellow and the coral together. And it doesn't all have to be homogenous. You can let it be a little bit splotchy, but when you lay your fiber out, allow these wispy ends to just lay down and try not to stretch them too far so that they just kind of lay right in place there. 
and have fun with this have fun with this layering and if you work in real small amounts like this then you'll be able to work out color schemes that you like and transitions the way um, you like to see them because there's no hard rules on this let me see I don't know if the comments are going up to the top okay so looking at this I just want to show you a few different blending a few different blending results so I'm going to set this aside and I'll, I'll hold it up on this cardboard so you can see does this show up well all right this is finger blended the mandarin and the red grapefruit I just blended this by hand this is made on the large hand carters the grain is running this way so on the hand cards the hand cards holds about this much and you don't really get this great big mat because of the way it comes off but this came off the hand cards and this is the way the grain is generally running so using the hand cards will give you a little bit bigger of a blend but you can see that they're very similar I got basically the same effect by doing it by hand in small chunks or bigger so if you want to get more done you could use the hand cards we doing okay mm -hmm. okay and then the last one I want to show you is this little beauty was made on the wild drum carter and I have that on the on the set here it's just a little four inch drum carter so if you're using a drum carter and I made it very thin I didn't even make it thick at all but you can see that what's nice about it is you can get a nice long strip of fiber and this was run two times through just blending uh, blending the two colors, the same two colors. So I just want you to see what's possible with blending. Finger blending, hand cards, and drum cards, you can get very similar effects. Sometimes it just controls a bigger product. Okay, and one of our felting friends asked, do the hand carters come in a smaller size? We do have a smaller size, yes. And it's, um, they're, they're, they are smaller, but they're also smaller this way. They're smaller this way, so it, it creates a much shorter bat. So if you're making little products, little projects, it's a smaller size and it's just a little more economical. So there is a small on the website. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna set this stuff aside. Was that helpful for you folks, everyone, just to see the blending a little bit? Here's one I have laid out and finished. How are we doing, Anne? Can you blend the MC1 with Merino? Yes, you can blend the MC1 with Merino, but you might want to test the effects. So I have pictures made with MC1 and, um, and Merino top. Um, and just for fun, I'm gonna try and get a close-up of this. This stem of my flower is, I'm gonna bring it up in just a second, the, is the MC1 and actually bamboo top. Does that show in this camera okay? Mm -hmm. So I finger blended MC1 and bamboo top together and I don't know if you can see how shiny it is but in person Anne saw it when I showed it to her and it's really fun even though one is short and one is long you just kind of have to deal with the two being together. Mm -hmm. Okay all right so I want to show you how to do this if you're a hundred percent needle felting whether it's all MC1 or whether you have a backing. And I'm gonna explain. So 100% needle felting, here are a couple of options. You could use this Clover pen tool. I know a lot of you have it. It's the 8900. And um, I have taken up the safety sleeve with rubber bands. I don't love this and I'm going to show you why. A lot of you might have it, but this, this wool is kind of thick. Um, it's not too thick, but with the backing it would be even thicker. So if it's thin, you can use this tool pretty satisfactorily. And I should probably shake in the heck out of the cameras. And these don't go in very deep, so if it's very thick, this may be very unsatisfying. But getting the safety sleeve up can kind of help it not clack too much. But I want to encourage if you use a multi-needle tool to use fine needles. 
If you go with coarse needles like the 32 or the 36, sometimes they're going to drive down the wool too quickly, stretch it and create really prominent needle holes that you later wonder how to get rid of. Instead, I encourage you to start with fine needles. This is the tool I use. I'm going to show you exactly how I needle felted this. And let me hold it up to the cameras if I can. This side is almost completely compressed and is ready, can um, be wet felted if I really wanted to get rid of every last, I'll see maybe, can you see the, mm -hmm. the difference there? If I wanted to get rid of every last needle mark, I can steam press it and I could wet felt it or I could leave it as is because it's really, really dense. And this side, um, I needle felted in two passes only and I worked on this to show you and I'm going to explain exactly how I did that in just one second. So here's what I did. I started with my multi four needle tool, but I loaded it with my 42 triangles. Those are the green needles. I loaded it with four of these. I loaded it with four of those and I needle felt really methodically, meaning I'm going to start in one corner and work my way across. I'm not driving it into the foam. I'm using the foam more as a bouncing off point. And when you go over these transitions, try not to create harsh lines like where you go over your blends. It's better to take it all down gradually, gradually, gradually so that you don't create great big lines. The only thing I really want to say is don't go, don't do this. Don't bounce all over because you'll create pockets and potentially folds when your wool is really lofty. So start in one place and work your way methodically. I almost always work in a diagonal, but work your way methodically across your piece. And if you don't like your transitions after you've needle felted, you could always go back and add a pinch here and there and change it up. And you can do that with your multi-needle tool or single tools. And Maria asks, could you embroider the stem instead? Okay, we won't jump over there. I don't want to jump away from what we're... Yes, you can, you can embroider anything, but let's talk about getting your, your canvas ready first. So let's just focus on getting your canvas ready. Now this is just the needle felting process. So again, what I would recommend, you can use this clover tool, it has fine needles, but if you're going to 100% needle felt, you want to get your felt pretty well felted. With this piece right here, I started with my four needle tool, my green needles, four of those, then I switched to my yellow needles and went across the whole thing again, and that's what you're seeing on this side. This side has been used, the green needles and then the yellow needles, and then to get this maximum smooth compression here with almost no needle marks showing. Let me show you what I used. I learned this from um, Jennifer Field of Jennifer Field Studios and what we do is we rubber band three yellow needles together and you sort of put them all like back to back. I've tried taping them with my floral tape and they tend to scoot. I'm still working on a way to do it so they don't scoot. But what happens is you get all three needles at the same, at the same level and then you're just going to methodically, like I really nerd out on this, I really, really love doing it. And you're just going to poke, 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 poke the whole thing down. So right here, this is still uh, fluffy, I'll start in the, I'll start right here. And this, you just poke down. Now this has the PFX on the back, which gives you a nice base to needle felt into. It gives you somewhere to go, basically. And the wool is thick enough. And you can just work your way across the whole thing and take your time and flatten it down and get a really, really nice compression using the fine needles. So you can 100% needle felt your canvas base. If you're going to do that, Make it thick enough, like um, someone just asked, could you embroider the stem? Make it thick enough that it will handle the tension of the thread and not pull apart. So this is pretty dense. Could it be felted more? Absolutely. It could be wet felted more. 
it could be wet felted more, it could be needle felted more, but you don't want to needle felt through the back or just as the blue is coming through the back, the white would come through the front. So only needle felt in one direction if you have a different color on the back. But just for fun, before we um, do anything else, let's look at what happens if you steam press something that's been needle felted. Okay, can I switch to that? Good, okay, let's see if my iron will reach. Okay, so I have a couple of things here. Um, firstly, let me show you this. This piece is just 100% needle felted, but it's very thin, not like this one, which has the great backing and is really durable. I can stretch it a little, but not much. So make sure that you needle felt to the point that it will hold up to what you want to do with it. This is just barely needle felted. I should maybe even, I even thought about steam pressing this one. This piece was 100% needle felted. It's paper, paper thin. It weighs about four tenths of an ounce. And then it was steam pressed. It's still delicate. If I were to, if I wanted to, I could rough up the surface, which isn't desirable, but you could needle felt a pattern onto it right now. And I would only recommend that if you're going to back it with something. And that's what we'll look at next week is backing it instead of putting the backing on, a backing on to start. So steam pressing can give you some nice compression and smooth things out. And Penny asks, should you always use a steam iron on wool? I would use a steam iron or use a damp cloth. This is my super cheapy iron. And look, the, the wool's not gonna burn. So first, I'm gonna hold this up. First, let's look at the one that's like half as compressed and half as lofty. And I'm gonna steam press this. Um, turn my iron on, my cheapy iron here. Okay, so I'm just gonna iron right on the surface. You could spray it too, you know, if you want. Um, turn on thing. I'm gonna spray it, I'm gonna spray it a little bit too. There's water in here. <laughs> I haven't used this iron in so long, it's kinda sad. I forgot my iron. Um, okay, I'm pressing the side that was already needle felted. It's getting warm, but where's my steam? I'm afraid my Oh, here it goes. It's thinking about it. <laughs> steam pressing will smooth out your fibers, but it will not felt them. Okay? It's, it's not going to felt them, but it's going to smooth them out, and it'll even compress them a little bit. I should have a towel down. Yeah. A couple of our lovely friends want to know what setting is the iron on? Oh, it's on wool. I just have it set on wool, but I'll go up. I don't care. And Jamie wants to confirm ironing is for getting the fuzzy short. Uh, right now, all we're doing is compressing. We're just compressing the fibers. So, like, if you want to needle felt something and not wet felt it at all, go ahead and give it a steam iron and see how you feel about it. But needle felt it well first. Now, with that said, you can needle felt something. If you're shy about wet felting, needle felt it pretty well and then steam press it, and then wet felt it. And we'll look at that together. You might just feel a little bit safer. So for y'all who saw this just a second ago, with just a single press or two, notice how much compression I got on this side. It's not felted, but it did compress it more. It didn't felt it more, it just compressed it more, and it even smoothed out a lot of the needle marks. Does that show? My iron needs a good cleaning. And Kim wants to know, will the color of the wool change when ironing? No, but don't, you know, don't burn it. You know, for the most part, it won't. It won't, but don't burn it. Don't like, you know, let your iron be scorching. That's why I would say use a steam iron. So this piece is just big and lofty. If you want to wet felt this piece and you're nervous about it, you can steam press it first. Now, let me say, you can 100% wet felt these pieces. We do that like in our wet felting a bookmark kit. This is kind of, it's kind of the same process because we do a real thin layout. So you could do 100% wet felting, but if you're shy at all, or if you want the convenience of sort of setting up your colors first, then needle felt it first, press it, and then steam iron it. Look, just for fun, I'm gonna steam, I have never pressed the, uh, the Hobbit house. So this Hobbit house is needle felted, um, you know, it's just an easy, fun little tutorial. It's free on our website. You can download it and make the same picture or one similar. And it was 100% needle felted onto our PFX. And you can see I just wrapped the color around the back. So just for fun, let's needle felt it. I mean, let's steam press it. And Kim wants to know, 
Kate asks, uh, the iron doesn't burn the wool, nope. but if you have silk or bamboo in it, will they burn? Yeah, you know, if you have silk or bamboo, if you're concerned about it, just use a pressing cloth. Put a damp pressing cloth over the top. Jean asks, do you iron all your flat projects? Most of them I do. Most of them, like all my animal pictures and everything like that, I do needle felt the heck out of them. I mean, I needle felt them so they're really, really smooth. What do you think, Ann? Super smooth. It's super smooth. Now, what it does is it can help kind of take out your needle marks. Warning, if your picture has dimension like this one, and especially if there's loftiness to it, meaning uh, like you didn't get all the air out and it's not firm, your iron is gonna wanna mush that out and flatten it. And I did that once and really liked the effect. Like I did a Hobbit house and I had locks and stuff on it and I ironed it and it mushed them out and I actually loved it. So just. Think about that before you steam iron. So you can see we haven't hurt it. We have smoothed it out. This picture's been sitting around here for, well, since the day it was made. Years and years and years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Anne gives it the thumbs up. So do we have time to do like a quick, do you want to do a quick wet felt of one of our needle felts? Should we? Yeah, I think we've got time. Oh, as Brain asks, can you add details on after ironing it? Yes, 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 and that's what you're looking at here. So this piece was needle felted, and then wet felted, and then I needle felted on the daisy. No part of the daisy was on before this was finished. So absolutely, you can add de detail back onto this one. And I've done that too on my, on my portraits. Just keep in mind when you make your canvas, like this is paper thin, this one is paper thin, and this is a pretty dense daisy. But if you want to stitch, or especially machine stitch, or do a lot of embroidery, make sure that you can't see through it. Make sure that it has some integrity um, and you couldn't just poke your finger through spots because you don't want to tear your fabric when you go to do that. So give, it, give yourself a good base to work on. And we are getting like a stream of wet felt. Oh, okay. yes, it's to the wet Okay, okay, thing. so let's do that real fast. It's so easy. Here we go. You see me do this before. Grippy so I don't slide. Um, I'm going to put down a towel just so I can wipe my hands. This is the uh, my tray. I'm going to go this direction. I've got my water. Soap exists somewhere. Let's see. Sharon asks if you wet felt. First, will your background be less likely to pull up the fibers into the top layer later when you add detail? Can you restate the question? Because I think it's here. Let's do this one. This one was needle felted and then um, and then steam pressed. But I, I can you repeat Absolutely. the question? If you wet felt your background first, will it be less likely to pull up the fibers into the top layer? when you add detail on later. It's, when you're, if you're adding detail on to needle felt in, there's no pulling up. It's only putting in. There's no pulling up. Now, I, I have a great big picture that I wet felted the whole background and then I needle felt the top on. So when you needle felt the design on, there is no pulling up of the background. Um, so I, I don't know if the question is, needs to be restated. All right, I need my sponge. And a couple of our fashion friends want to know, can you use the iron-on transfer pen on these backgrounds? You could, but um, you know, the looser the wool is, the harder it is for that design to transfer. But we've even done it on our PFX, didn't we, Anne? <laughs> but it's just not as uh, sharp as an image. Okay, so here's what I have. My tray, a grippy mat so I don't slide, our bamboo mat, and our mesh. Yes, we always get asked, do we sell this in the store? Yes, we do. I've been using it for 15 years. Um, I love it. Keep it clean. Just clean it after you're done. And this is how I add soap and water. Soap and water to my sponge. My sponge is loaded, and I'm going to press, press, press. I'm not padding. I'm pressing water and soap in and air out. And notice that rolling motion. You can see I'm really pressing. We want to wet our project all the way through. It's like a dry plant. Think of a dry plant in a pot that you want to really flush water through. 
that's what wool is like and some wool is easier to wet than others um, and don't worry about why just know that your hands tell the story so the first thing we do is press we've gotten a lot of air out and the layers are migrating together from our needle felting and our steam pressing so the difference between a hundred percent wet felting this background and needle felting it and then wet felting it is if you've needle felted it first if you've needle felted and steam pressed it first you can be a little more aggressive in your initial wet felting don't go too fast especially if you're new flat palm we press first we wet and only rub after it's completely wet and when we rub initially all we're trying to do is form a surface skin layer if you peel back your mesh and the fiber sticks ease up your pressure a little bit now when you wet felt you could hundred percent wet felt just like I'm doing now rubbing methodically around back and forth side to side on both sides you could hundred percent roll it in the bamboo or you could do a combination which I usually do and I don't know if it's just because I get bored <laughs> or you know I find it more effective but I do both and I always soap both sides before I roll and a couple of our felting friends want to know is the water hot my water is pretty warm it's cooled a lot since we've been um, talking if you have hundred percent wool you can use water that's pretty warm some people felt in cold water always. I mix it up. Um, but what I do want is a lot of soap. Our soap is um, low sudsing. You don't want a lot of suds because suds add air. So a nice vegetable-based soap, especially with a high oil content, will be your friend when you're felting. And do you have any soap in the water or are you just a No, water? no I don't. I, I mostly add it to my hands. Only time I really add it to my bucket is if I'm soaping up a really big project and I just want a little bit of a help, but I always add it with my sponge in my hands. Okay, I have rubbed this whole thing front and back, peel back your mesh at a low grade, and now I'm gonna just roll. And when we roll, here's my hot tips. One, make sure that your core or your bamboo is round and not flat on one side. Don't wrinkle up your project, so notice I'm not putting any pressure when I roll. And um, just make sure that you have a nice roll when you roll. So what I'm gonna do is roll like 25 times, like this, just rock and roll I call it. Sorry if I'm shaking all the tables. Rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. And then I'm gonna give it a quarter turn on its axis just so that a different part of the project is now sitting down. Diane shares, I love the olive oil soap. <laughs> Me too, Diane. I use it. I've been using it now for a long, long time. I started with, as other people recommended, which was dish soaps, Dawn and Ivory. They tore up my hands and I really did not find that they felt it well for me personally. Um, and since I discovered this olive oil soap, I've never gone back. Okay, so we go 25 times and notice that you want your project to stay round. If it starts to get flat or mushy, just re-roll it. And this is all we're going to do. You unroll it and then notice that we peeled our mesh back and it didn't stick. Give your project a quarter of a turn. If it will fit in your bamboo, then just turn clockwise. You don't have to have your mesh, but what it does is it just helps make sure that everything stays down and it will even allow you the opportunity to rub and, you know, rub it in between if you desire. You can take it off once you start getting a pretty good felt base going. Are there any questions on the um, felting part? What I want to say is this is thin. If you're new to wet felting, start with a thin project. Just get the feeling for it, notice where you have holes, notice where you have lumps and bumps, and then correct that next time on your layout. 
If you have a hole or a gap in your layout, it usually does not get filled in when you felt. Instead, the fibers go back towards other fibers. They tend to pull away from a hole and towards another bank of fibers. So just practice getting good level layouts and even felt to different degrees. When you think you have felted something all the way, go back, heat it up, felt it again. Get in there really, really hard. Don't, if you think something's felted, rinse it. Rinse it, let it dry, and most of the time, especially if you're brand new, you'll see that you didn't go far enough. So I challenge you on your first pieces, just so that you learn what something looks like when it's 100% felted, is that you felt the heck out of it. So we aren't gonna have time to finish this on camera, but what I would do is continue rolling from all four edges 100 times, turning on each after each 25 on its axis. Flip it over and do the same. After I've done that, then I might squeeze it out. And you, if you were sitting here with me, you would see that this is barely felted. Um, and felt it with my hands. Now some people would be felting with their hands already, but you just need to develop the skill to know when you're moving your fibers and when you're not. So after rubbing from all four directions, then I'm gonna do hand felting, that's rubbing on each side, and also palming, which I think we did this best last time in our, in our wet felting a flower tutorial. So palming is one of my favorite ways to felt, and you're really mashing the two layers together. The one thing you wanna make sure is that you aren't roughing up the fibers. They shouldn't be pilling up, and your design should not be shifting under your fingers. If you're 100% wet felting, you couldn't be doing this this fast. But having needle felted, you can start handling the fibers much sooner. So what I'd like to encourage is that maybe over the next week, you make a few little canvases like this. Don't worry about your edges. You know, just worry about learning to create a really good felt and liking your transitions. I heard something the other day. My husband shared a quote with me. And he said, the quote said, I gotta remember the guy's name. It's not who loves you that matters, but what you love. And so don't worry about what anyone else is doing or whether it's right in anyone else's eyes. Just ask yourself whether you like it and let that be the deciding factor of you know how you, how you grade that piece. But I do wanna challenge you to make really good quality felt and felt it really, really hard so you know what that looks like. And you can back off of that if you want to. So I'm gonna continue felting on this and let's, um, we're gonna turn up the camera and see if I can answer any questions before we go on. Pause for a drink. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Back again. Okay, so I'm gonna. I know we didn't have time to to finish the felting, um, but let me explain to you what to do. Felt it all the way, as I said, and then felt it as far as you think you need to go. Rinse it, and then evaluate the doneness of the felt. Um, once you're happy with the doneness, make sure all the soap is rinsed out and then soak it in a vinegar water solution. This is a very thin project, so put just like a quarter cup of vinegar into a couple of cups of water, soak it for 15 minutes. That will help break down the soap and help bring the wool back to its naturally acidic state, which is what you want. Um, just squeeze all the water out, maybe spin dry it, and set them out to dry flat. You could also steam press them when they're still damp. Um, and make some of these over this week before we come back together next week, and maybe needle felt some designs on. You're not going to get it wrong. You can't mess it up. When I did this little daisy, I, I didn't have much of a plan. Um, let me show you. I have my drawing around here somewhere. I cut out. Here it is. Um, I made a little frame and said, well, I want to make a picture that's about this size. It may end up being bigger. 
and all I did was cut the center out of that little square I showed you and I drew a little daisy on the same cardstock just so I had it there as a little model for myself because I don't like see daisy in my head um, so go with some simple subjects needle felt them on and bring your questions back for this next week and we'll look at ways to turn these into artist trading cards greeting cards postcards art just to display like on an easel or art to display on your wall we'll look at embroidering on top and even hopefully we'll have time for top stitching like on the, the sewing machine okay Jenny, uh, oh, well, real quick, a couple of yeah. our felting friends wanted to know how to roll their projects if their projects are uh, longer than their bamboo mats. Okay, if, there's a couple of things you can do if your project is longer than your, your bamboo mat. So if you still want to use the bamboo mat laid out like I have it, then what you can do is roll the length twice. So roll the length, spin it over, roll the length, and see if you can get it shorter. If you can't, do what we did on the flower tutorial. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. Roll up your bamboo, rubber band the ends, wrap your project around the bamboo. And then I like to use a quilting square on the outside so that it holds the bamboo in place. So just rubber band the two ends of your bamboo. If you're working with more delicate fibers, if you feel like the bamboo is just too, um, maybe too abrasive on the fibers that you've chosen to work with, consider um, rubber banding the grippy shelf mat on the outside. I discovered this a couple of years ago when I was wet felting the poinsettias, and um, I don't use a lot of bubble wrap, but I had this around, so I used this as my core rather than think of it as a bed with a core built in. So just use another roller. One other one that I've done um, is on, uh, you can do the same thing on standard kitchen rolling pins and you can even you know roll on the surface or again use this as a core and this is our super bubble rubber banded to the outside of a standard rolling pin and this is just the bamboo mat <laughs> rubber banded to the outside of a rolling pin so you can also roll over the top um, or use this as a core if you want okay any other questions where do the texture rolling pins come in Devin says Devin, thank you for asking. The textured rolling pins, these ones right here, um, these are the ones that we import from Ireland, from Nikki and Nikki. Um, this one has our name on one end and Nikki and Nikki on the other. These are a little more aggressive, so use these when you have projects that are um, can take it. With MC1, if I were wet felting MC1, I would use it towards the end of the felting process and not in the beginning. So I use it on something that's usually a little bit thicker um, and fibers that can handle the abrasiveness because these cut edges are pretty sharp. But if you have them and you want to use it on your more delicate fibers, do like this. Put bubble, either lay bubble wrap down and roll your roller over it or consider putting bubble on the outside of the rolling pin and roll over that. Okay, there is a recent, um, I think someone asked about framing a project and or what to do at the end and someone's saying there's another Wooly Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all, I hope this has been helpful. I really do and thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you'll tune in next week also as we finish up our pieces and I hope you make a few of these over the next week. The fairies are gonna come back. We're gonna give away some presents. They're always full of goodies, goodies, goodies. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Have y'all been busy? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> like totally. I totally <laughs> did. <laughs> okay, we have some presents. Yes. Yeah. All right. Who's drawing? <laughs> Alright, our first winner. Diane Hoskins. Yay, Yay Diane! Yay. Congratulations. Where'd she win in? She won two two ounce rolls, thank you. Of merino top and her choice of embellishment fibers, any of the embellishment fibers, we just selected Tessa Silk because we liked the color with the merino top today. So like hankies or nebs or bamboo, so one pack plus any two colors. Okay, so Diane, email customer service at livingfelt.com. Let us know what you choose and we'll get that in the mail to you, including colors. Choose your colors. Who's next? I'm going to heart everybody. Awesome. <laughs> Alrighty, Ruth Ann Holland. Yay, Yay. Ruth! What's she wearing? Alrighty, she went, oh, thank you, Hannah. <laughs> a little sampler 
Um, so we've got an MC1 goodie bag here. We've got one wool felt sheet, and you can pick any of the colors. And then we'll send you a 10 inch by 20 inch piece of the PFX pre felt. Mm -hmm. Which we work with today. So you could try, see how you like needle felting into this, which you could then wet felt. Um, or leave it needle felt it, and you can also needle felt just straight into this, and you'll notice that you get very little shrinkage and very little puckering. It's a great base to needle felt into. Cool. Okay, last one. <laughs> Patricia Riley. Yay! Patricia. <laughs> Patricia, you won a wet felting bookmarks kit. Going to come with some MC1 fiber, uh, the mesh, and a bamboo mat. Perfect. Just awesome. like we did today. Just like we did today. You can make them thick or thin, cut them to shape, play with that. That's awesome. Thanks, gals. Hey, listen, we want to tell you that we have some really fun new things coming up in the coming weeks, some things that have been on your bucket list to learn. So stay tuned and watch. Being in our Living Felt Friends group, you always get first notice. So we're going to have some new announcements for you next week. Thanks for being here this week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a Bye, good everybody. Week. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoy this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned. We have fresh new videos almost every week of the year. And join our group, Living Felt Friends, on Facebook, where you can watch us live and just be part of an amazing, supportive community. We'll see you next time.